I found while looking through things I had in my kitchen food cupboard. Here are some more everyday substances that contain carbonates. These tablets are used as vitamin supplements. These for treating colds and flu. And these are used for treating indigestion. Even though they are used for different purposes, they have something in common. When placed in water, they give off lots of bubbles. Just what we would expect when an acid reacts with a carbonate. Can you recall the general equation we looked at in the previous lesson? An acid plus a carbonate react to form salt plus carbon dioxide plus water. Now, at the end of our previous lesson, I asked you to write balanced chemical equations for some reactions with carbonates. Let's check out the answers before continuing our investigation with these substances. Number one, sodium carbonate plus nitric acid react to form sodium nitrate plus carbon dioxide plus water. Remember that you must write the correct formula for sodium carbonate, which is Na2CO3. Sodium ions have a charge of plus 1 and carbonate ions minus 2. The formula for nitric acid is HNO3. The next tricky part is writing the formula of the salt. The metal ion present is the sodium ion and the acid is a nitric acid. Here, the sodium ion replaces the hydrogen ion to form the salt. So the formula of the salt is NaNO3, which is called sodium nitrate. To complete the equation, I need to add in the formula for carbon dioxide and water. Now, remember to balance the equation. We do this by counting the number of sodium ions above and see that there are two, but there is only one sodium ion below as a product. So, we need to write in a two in front of the salt. Now, we have two nitrates as product and only one as reactant. To balance, we write in a two in front of the nitric acid. Now check and see that the number of hydrogen, oxygen and carbon atoms is the same on both sides of the equation. Here are the answers for the other two equations. MgCO3 plus H2SO4 react to form MgSO4 plus CO2 plus H2O. And number 3, CaCO3 plus 2HCl react to form CaCl2 plus CO2 plus H2O. I'm sure you're getting the idea of writing balanced chemical equations and I hope you got all your task answers correct. If not, remember to do your corrections to make sure that you do not keep making the same mistakes. Practice really does make perfect. By the end of today's lesson, you should be able to investigate the reaction of an antacid tablet and hydrochloric acid, make a decision about the effectiveness of different tablets, and write balanced chemical equations for reactions of an acid and a base. Now, as I said earlier in the lesson, when these substances are placed in water, they give off bubbles. Let's take a look. Now, I'm sure you're wondering why these substances release gas when placed in water. This vitamin supplement contains a carbonate, sodium carbonate, and an acid. So it's not surprising that there is gas released when the tablet dissolves in water. The reaction is straightforward. An acid plus a carbonate gives us 
salt plus carbon dioxide plus water. The makers of these substances have made them effervescent. That means that they release gas for some obvious reasons. Now this substance dissolves easily in water and is quite pleasant to drink. Much better than having to swallow a large tablet. When medicine is dissolved, it is easier for the body to absorb. Another reason is that it is easier to package a compressed tablet than a bottle of liquid. Although these fizzy tablets have allowed us to see the reaction of an acid and a carbonate, there is another reaction that we need to focus on today. This reaction we cannot see because it happens where the tablet goes to work, inside the body. To understand what is happening, we need to go on a journey into the stomach. The stomach is not the friendliest place in the world. When food enters the stomach, the body works to release large amounts of hydrochloric acid together with important enzymes. These enzymes act as catalysts to help break down different types of food. They act as specialized catalysts. Normally, this process is very well controlled and the exact amount of acid is released to break down the food. However, when people eat too much or eat very fatty food, the stomach releases more acid than usual. This excess acid can have the following consequences. An uncomfortable bloated feeling, known as indigestion, or a sharp pain behind the breastbone called heartburn. Heartburn is caused by acid from the stomach, spilling out of the stomach and splashing up into the gullet or esophagus. This area does not have a strong protective lining like the stomach has, and as a result, the acid can damage this area. This causes the sharp pain. There are several known causes for indigestion and heartburn. These include overeating, eating too much just before going to sleep, wearing tight-fitting clothes, being overweight, and smoking. If you make wise choices, you can prevent having these uncomfortable and painful medical conditions. Now, Mild indigestion or heartburn can be treated easily using antacid tablets. But how do you know which is the best tablet to take? We make decisions based on many different factors, including advertising, cost, tradition, and even taste. But why not make decisions like scientists do? In science, whenever we have a decision to make, we need to base our thinking on experimental results. So in this case, I've crushed up some antacid tablets from sample A and sample B. I've dissolved these in distilled water, and then I've added universal indicator. In this burette, I have some hydrochloric acid. I'm going to add the hydrochloric acid to see which tablet is the most effective in neutralizing the acid. Now that didn't take much acid. In fact, it only took 1,5 centimeters cubed. And it's reached the end point. Let's try the other sample. Sample B now, carefully adding just a little acid at a time. We also wanted to get to a yellowish color. It's very close, it's pale green. We're almost there. That should do it. It took 2,5 centimeters cubed of acid to neutralize this tablet. So let's go back to the studio now to analyze our results. Here I have a table of the results that John obtained in the lab. Now 
I want you to think very carefully about these results. Which sample of antacid tablet was more effective at neutralizing the acid? Sample A took 1,5 centimeters cubed of acid to neutralize it, but sample B required more acid. Does that mean that A is more effective than B, or is B more effective than A? Let's see what some learners think about it. Sample A used up less acid and neutralized sooner. So I think that it means that it's more effective. No, I disagree. Sample B is definitely more effective. One tablet neutralizes more acid. Therefore, we'll need fewer of these tablets to neutralize excess stomach acid. Well, those are two very interesting points of view. Can you see that even when we have results from an experiment, it may still not be easy to decide which tablet is the best to use? Why don't you have a class discussion based on this evidence? Which do you think is the most effective, sample A or sample B? Now, there's one last thing I want you to know. The active ingredient in our two samples were different. In sample A, the active ingredient was a carbonate, but in sample B, the active ingredient was magnesium oxide. That's quite interesting. It means that a metal oxide has neutralized an acid. You may remember that all metal oxides are basic. So what happens when a metal oxide reacts with an acid? Let's look at the equation. Our reactants are magnesium oxide plus hydrochloric acid. Here we know the acid, HCl, will donate a hydrogen ion. And the metal ion, Mg, will join with the anion of the acid to form a salt. In this case, the salt must be magnesium chloride, which has a formula, MgCl2. Is this the only product formed? No, the hydrogen ion combined with the oxide ion to form water. So in this case, the word equation is magnesium oxide plus hydrochloric acid react to form magnesium chloride plus water. And now we can balance the chemical equation too. We add a 2 in front of the hydrochloric acid. That seems to make sense. And we can write another general equation. An acid plus a base react to form salt plus water. Now you can use this to complete today's task. Complete balanced chemical equations for the reaction of 1. Magnesium oxide plus hydrochloric acid and 2. Copper oxide plus sulfuric acid. In our next lesson, we will show how this kind of reaction is very useful in making salts. See you then. Goodbye.